Today on the show, we revisit the inspiring story of Michael Kitimet, who, about five years ago, left the country for the United States. He was going there to further his studies and attended the prestigious Richmond University. Well, Michael is done with his course, and you would not believe what he's doing to the community that raised him. Welcome to the show. When we first met Michael, it was back in December of 2017 when we featured him on this very show. At the time, Michael was living in the state of Virginia and was pursuing an undergraduate degree in mathematics and economics at the Robbins School of Business in Richmond City. This building houses two main departments. Uh, on the left side is the Jepson uh, uh, School of Leadership and the other side is the Math and Computer Science. It was fantastic, you know, the teachers were amazing. You get to form close-knit relationships with your professors who get to know you very well, know, you know, like what you need in life and how they can support you in that aspect. His relocation to the U.S. was as a result of his stellar performance when he sat for his Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education exams, emerging as the best-performing male student in the entire Kajado district, earning him entry into the Equity Leadership Program, which provided him an academic scholarship and facilitated his stay. One of the areas of education that they really focus on is on research. And, uh, you know, because they know research is like the way into the future. Like if they, we want better medicines in the future, if we want better, uh, you know, equipment, you know, for war and, you know, and defense and all that kind of things. And it is this culture of investing in research that provoked a thought in Michael. He remembered his childhood and how it was difficult for him and many other children from his community to access study material. Growing up, I never saw a library in my community. Like the first library that I came to see was in my high school, which was like so far, like two hours away from where I live. So that, that's pretty far. So like in my entire area, there was no library to begin with. So textbooks, we had to share. That was a big, that was a big pain because, you know, if you had to share one textbook among three to four students, you know, and you had like an assignment, that would mean you have to like jumpstart, you know, like you should, uh, it, you know, like if it's not your day to carry the textbook home with you, you have to like be proactive and borrow the book and you know copy down the assignment before going home. So without wasting any more time, the mathematician made a calculated move to replicate the same back home and try and solve this problem that had been plaguing his community once and for all. I came up with this idea, I was like, you know, there's no need for students to go through this pressure anymore, you know. Like I want them to feel comfortable in school. I don't want them to feel like school is a burden to them. And uh, through the help of the university, there is this program called uh, the Pro Davis Projects for Peace Foundation that awards projects um, that aim to enhance peace in our communities. And uh, it, it's pretty broad-minded, you know, depending on the definition of peace. So f for me, peace means when people have the opportunity to advance themselves personally and economically. And, uh, you know, you can only advance yourself personally and economically if you had, you know, opportunities like education to advance yourself. So I decided, you know, let me start a library back in my community, give those students an opportunity to be able to compete with their peers in other parts of the country who have better opportunities or, you know, better resources, so that, you know, in the future, they can, also, they can, they can all have a playing field, the same le a level playing field where they can be able to compete, you know, amongst each other equally. Backed by the university, Michael decided to open a library at Olteyani Primary School in Kiserian, Kajiado County. And in July of 2018, Fanaka, which in Swahili means success, became operational. I chose this school because despite it being in an area where, you know, there are a lot of hardships, you know, lack of classrooms, to say the least, the students really push themselves and most of them have actually gone to matriculate to high school and, you know, and, and vocational schools you know, where their skills could actually be put into use in the community. So their passion and their push, you know, that despite their challenges, they could actually rise to become better people in community. That is what pushed me to you know, set up for this school. And I actually established a very good rapport with uh, the administration of the school who actually loved the idea of putting up the library. 
in, the, in this institution. So when we first opened the library, I came with a consignment of books from the US. My community back then in Richmond was very supportive. When my story aired in one of the local newspapers, um, they were very supportive. Many people came and donated books. And so we opened this library with my first consignment of books from abroad, which was about 300 books. But uh, the, inf the inventory has now grown. And uh, two weeks ago, I received another consignment of books from abroad. And now we have close to 1,000 books in the library. At this point, we are interrupted by a familiar sound. It is 11 a.m. and the ringing bell alerts the students that it is time for their next class. But for standard 7 pupils, the bell signifies the start of their favorite period, library time. The library can hold a maximum of 50 pupils per session and Daring Abroad was able to experience firsthand the impact that the library has had on the lives of these pupils. From 2017 and backwards, we could only talk of a library. Uh, they, they didn't have an idea of what a library is. So you could take a topic on library and you don't know what to tell them. You just tell them it is, it is, a, it is a building with books. But now they can see it. So learning is real. Also, uh, it has made learning interesting. So interesting. Because when a child moves from class now to the library, uh, there is always that, the, the, the feeling of goodness uh, because a change is as good as a, as a rest. So when a child is coming, uh, comes out of the classroom uh, situation to another place, you find uh, that the child is more interested in learning. But it is not only the school's administration that is seeing the benefit of the facility. Miriam Naini is a standard age pupil at Oltayani Primary. She narrates to us how important the library is on a personal basis. First of all, there is some books which, which have the composition flavors. So it has helped me for improving for my composition and my even study, other studies like science. Because I want to be a journalist, I want the books that will help me to, be, uh, to improve my, especially in English and Kiswahili, so that I could be a journalist in future. Sentiments that are shared by Humphrey Ombeva, a class 6 pupil. I like this level because it has many books. This book helps an individual how to learn a lot of things, mm -hmm. like such as to, to use a polite words mm -hmm. and, to have a, and to write a good composition mm -hmm. and, have, and how to speak a good English and or soil. It's not only helping the students from here. There are children who came from a neighboring school to see what a library looks like. So it has even an impact in the, in the community as a whole. This is all thanks to Michael. <laughs> and judging from the interaction that he has with the pupils, Michael is clearly not a stranger here. He makes a point of dropping by as often as possible since relocating back to Kenya after graduating in July of 2019. It is Michael's wish that Fanaka Library will continue to inspire and facilitate change in the lives of these young ones. My earlier vision and my vision till now is for that building, the building behind me, to be a place for success for these students who may come from disadvantaged communities, that it may be a, a room for inspiration and a room where students can actually know what's happening. Like, because the books that we have inside the library, um, you know, let's say half of the books are from abroad. So they get, so through those books, the students will be able to be exposed to what's happening outside Kenya they'll get to know what's happening you know in the rest of the world through that exposure they're able to aspire for more you know not just you know what they are used to within the, the local environment they may be able to aspire for you know other greater things out there that they may not have been been able to you know aspire for 
if this facility has not been established. Apart from his philanthropic work, Michael spends most of his time at Equity Bank, where he works as a relationship officer. I'm very thankful to Equity Bank for helping me with my transition back into the country from the US back to Kenya. And, uh, you know, so I really, you know, interact with customers a lot at the bank, you know, trying to help them, you know, with queries that they may have. You know, I also help, at, uh, you know, in cash if needed. You know, I also help at the front office if needed. You know, so equity has just been like a new home for me at the moment. For Michael, this is but a pit stop on his journey to become an agent of change in the country. He is scheduled to return to the U.S. this August. I want to rev revolutionize the transport system in Kenya. So, and that can only be done through research. Better research, like, I need to know like, what works for Kenya, what methods, what, what, what systems, what road networks you know, work for Kenya. Because anybody out there knows that sitting in traffic jam, like in Nairobi, uh, like during rush hours, wastes a lot of time. You know, it wastes a lot of money for us economically as a country. We lose billions every year because of you know, sitting just in the traffic jams. So I want to be um, an agent of change in the transport system. That's why I want to go back to school. And uh, right now I've actually secured an, admi an admission to Arizona State University to pursue a PhD in applied math. This is what drives him. The opportunity to inspire others and have a positive influence in their lives. That is why he's grateful for the opportunity to dare abroad in the first place. And as we wind up, this is Michael's advice to Kenyans abroad on this week's Diaspora Bite. Kenyans who have the opportunity of going out there and failing to come back home and contribute in a positive way, um, I feel like that should change. I feel like they should go out there, learn whatever they, they can as much as possible, then come back home and use that to be able to change um, situations back home. And there you have it. You do not have to have millions to have an impact back home. That is the lesson that Michael Kitimet wants each and every one of us to learn. Well, that is all we had for you today. Be sure to catch us next Saturday as we bring you inspiring stories from all across the globe. Till then, my name is Michael Zimanjik.